What's going on, buddy? My name is Welcome back to another video. And today, today, we're going to be getting into methods for Java. So, if you're programming languages like JavaScript or Lua, uh, you might know these as functions. And methods, or functions as other programming languages call them, are actions that are only executed when you call them. Uh, you call them by name. So, let's write our first method. And actually, we're going to write this under public class app curly brace. We're not going to write this in our main area where we write our code. So to start this out, we're going to write static, which basically lets us do stuff with uh, objects before we assign them. Then we're going to put the void elements, and then we're going to put the name of our method, and we're going to call this message. Now we're going to put a pair of parentheses, and I'll get into what these parentheses will do in just a second, and then we're going to put a pair of curly braces. And inside of our curly braces is going to be our code block, what our method is going to do. So what our method is going to do is that it's going to print out a message that says this is a message to you. And then we'll put a semicolon at the end of that. Now, if we run our code, nothing's going to happen because we still have to call our method. So to call our method, we're going to go to our main area where we write our code and call it. So we're going to put message, parentheses, semicolon. There we go. We have successfully called it. Now let's run our code and we will see it successfully print out. This is a message to you. Very, very cool. So we just wrote our first method and executed our first method in Java. Yay! All right. Let's do some more methods. There's a decent amount of more information I need to tell you. So let's remove these and write a new method. We're going to do static, void, and we're going to call this vacant rooms. Let's pretend we're making a program for a hotel. Uh, and then we're going to put a pair of parentheses and then quotations. Now inside of our parentheses, uh, these are going to be called parameters. I actually want to make a comment there. These are called parameters. Uh, and our parameters is basically we're going to create a variable in our parameters. So we're going to call this integer. Well, we're not going to call it an integer. It's going to be an integer. And then we're going to uh, give it a name. So it's going to be integer. Uh, we're going to call it uh, room. And then inside of our curly braces, uh, we'll put system.out.println. Uh, we're going to put room plus, and then in quotation marks for a string, is vacant semicolon all right so what it's going to do is it's going to put the room number when we assign it and then it's going to say is vacant so it's just going to combine the integer and string together to form a statement so let's assign it so we're going to actually kind of like pretend we're writing out our uh calling for our methods we're going to do vacant rooms parentheses quotation now, as you see, we have an error here, because we still haven't assigned the value of room, so what's it going to print out? Room plus is vacant? No, no, no. Now, inside of these parentheses where we call our function is going to be our argument, and this is going to be the value for our parameter. Uh, and if we have multiple parameters, uh, our arguments are going to be in the same order as our parameters are. But we have one, so we only have to put one argument in here. Uh, and we're going to put the room number, so we'll do room 101. So when we run our code, it's going to say 101 is vacant. Very, very cool. We can actually call a method multiple times as well. So we could do vacant rooms 102, vacant rooms 103. We have to reassign the value of room to each time we call the method. So when we run this, 101 is vacant, 102 is vacant, 103 is vacant. Awesome sauce. All right. So let's have multiple parameters now. We'll do integer room, and then we're going to do string vacant is what we're going to call it. Uh, we have an error here because we haven't assigned a vacant yet to our methods when we call them. And we're going to move this string up here that we put in our method, and we're just going to do room plus vacant. Because what it's going to do, our vacant string is going to say is vacant. So let's head over here to our arguments, and we're going to separate these by a comma. Uh, like we separated our parameters by a comma. And I'm going to put a pair of quotations because this is a string. And we're going to say is vacant. And as you can see, the error is gone for our first, for line number nine, where we called our method. So let's do this to our other uh, callings. We're going to do is vacant. We're going to do is vacant. As you can see, we have no more errors because we have signed the value of room and we have signed the value of sh uh, vacant in order as our parameters. So we do room vacant, and then for our calling, we did room vacant. Very, very cool. So and when we run this, it's going to just combine them together. It's not going to add them because we're not uh, putting integers together. It's just going to combine them to form one statement. 
Let me know it says room 101 is... Not says room 101. It says 101 is vacant, 102 is vacant, 103 is vacant. Very, very cool. Now let's add a third parameter if something is not vacant. So we're going to call this not vacant. Now for it to print out, we actually have to put it in our print.line thing. So we're going to do room plus vacant plus not vacant. Uh, we have errors here because we have not assigned the value of not vacant yet. Now, however, we want two rooms to be vacant and one room to not be vacant. So room 101 and 102 is going to be vacant, but room 103 is going to be not vacant. It's going to have people staying there tonight. So what we're going to do is that we are going to just put a comma and a pair of quotation marks to room 101 and room 102. Because we assigned the value of not vacant to just nothing. There's nothing there. That's it. Now, room 103 is actually going to be vacant. So in our second uh, argument, we're just going to put a pair of quotation marks. And then we're going to put a comma there and then put our third argument, like our third parameter. And it's going to say, is not vacant, period. So room 101 and room 102 is going to say 102 is vacant, 101 is vacant. However, it's going to say 103 is not vacant. So when we run it, it's going to do exactly what I just said. We just printed them out right here. We see which rooms are vacant and which rooms are not vacant. That's very, very cool. Uh, so yeah, awesome sauce. Now let's create a new method. We're going to actually create three, uh, two more in this video. So let's do static void, and we're going to call this COPPA. If you live in the United States and you know stuff about YouTube, you automatically know what this law is. Uh, we're going to call an integer age. That's what's going to be its name. Uh, so our parameter is going to be integer. It's going to be called age. Now, inside of our code block is going to be an if statement. So it's going to say, if age is greater than or equal to 13, uh, it's going to print out nothing. And to print out nothing, uh, we're going to print a line. We're just going to put a pair of quotation marks. And there we go. We're printing out nothing if our age is greater than or equal to 13. And the reason we're doing 13 is because the COPPA laws protects people under 13. Now, what if your age is less than 13? Well, we're going to write an else statement, and what this is going to do, it's going to say something to the person trying to create an account that's not 13. It's going to say, you must be 13 years old to obtain a room. So yeah, very cool. Uh, so yeah, if you're 13, it prints out nothing. If you're uh, under 13, it's going to say you must be 13 to obtain a room. Actually, you can put a comment here. So we don't print out the vacant stuff. Very, very cool. All right. So let's call our methods. We're going to do COPPA, and then we're going to assign the age. So let's say our age is 12. We're going to run our code. And it's going to say you must be 13 years old to attain a room. So we insert the value of age to 12. And it says if age is not 13 or above, it's going to print out you must be 13 years old to obtain a room. Let's change this to 13, however, and run our code. Did I run this twice? I think I did run this twice. I did. Okay. It's going to print out nothing because if we, we told the uh, Java to print out nothing if our age is 13 at least or above. So, yeah, there we go. Now we can obtain a room. Yeah, very cool. So we just made a COPPA warning. And COPPA, if you don't know what that is, is a law saying that you cannot take data from children under the age of 13. YouTube had a big fiasco and lawsuit on it by the FDC. They paid a lot of money. And now they have some rules on there uh, that you must follow as a YouTuber. Stuff that I must follow as a YouTuber. Uh, so yeah, very cool. Now let's create our third and final method. Uh, so we're going to do static void. And we're going to call this prices. And they're in our parentheses inside of our uh, parameters. We're going to do integer. We're going to call it room integer and call it fee because hotels have like made fee or convenience fee or breakfast fee or something like that. And then our code block, we're going to uh, assign. Actually, we're not going to assign anything. We're actually going to create a new integer. Uh, it's going to be integer. It's going to be called total. And it's going to be room plus fee. So it's going to be the total of room plus fee. Now let's create an if statement. So if the total is greater than or equal to six hundred forty-five dollars, I'll I'll show you in just a second why I chose that. Uh, then it's going to print out something that a lot of people would love to see. Congrats, you are able to stay an extra night 
for free. We'll put free in all caps because we want to make sure people to know that they're getting a whole extra night for free. Uh, so yeah. So if the total is greater than or equal to 645, this is in dollars or pounds or I guess it's a currency. Whatever currency you choose. Uh, it's going to print out this. So yeah, very, very cool. I'm going to actually move our copper thing to the comment. Very, very cool. Now, what we're going to do is that we are going to call our method. So we're going to call prices and give it a value of room. So room uh, one night is going to be $200. And they, a fee per night is going to be $15. I'll put a comment here. One room equals $200. And it'll do one day of fee equals $15. Just so our people who write the program or customer service knows this. So what it's going to do is it's going to uh, create an integer, which is uh, 215 uh, combined, uh, not com uh, combined, added. So it's going to be $215. And Java is going to see, okay, is this at least $645? Uh, if it is, we're going to print out this congratulations statement. If it's not, we ain't going to do anything. So when we run it, 215 is not $645 or above, so it ain't going to print anything out. However, if we change this to $600 for three nights, and we did uh, $45 for three nights of fees, and we run our code, it's going to say, congrats, you were able to stay an extra night free. Because 600 plus 45 is 645, and it says here, if it's at least 645, here print out congrats you are able to stay in extra night for free awesome sauce and yeah that's gonna end the video thank you so much for watching uh i have more java videos up if you want to go see them uh i have a playlist right there about the video go check it out subscribe if you're new it really does help me out like the video that also helps me out join my discord server i have an education discord server it's really cool um to join so join if you want to teach people new things or join to learn something new yourself leave a comment with your criticism i love criticism and yeah i got nothing else for y'all so adios